I'm super excited for this video today because I have a new product that I was able to use to put on the car. It's something that I've been very worried about, kind of scared, didn't know if I could do it well, and I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way. Of course, I'm talking about a dip for the emblems on the car. I'm not talking about Plasti Dip, I'm talking about Hyper Dip. This is a new product that is supposed to be better than your traditional Plasti Dip. So I was very excited to get my hands on this and thank you so much for sending out this product. I'm not being paid to do this, however, I was able to get a discount code for all of you should you decide you also wanna take this on. Now this product is a spray-on product and it takes about an hour to do this from start to finish. But what's nice about this is you can do this yourself. You don't have to worry about double-sided tape or emblem covers or any of that stuff. You just spray this on and it is not permanent. Meaning if you decide later you don't like it or you mess it up, it's easy to remove and you can try again. So I got this product and I applied it to the car. Like some of you, you may be worried about spraying anything over the paint of this car. I was certainly worried about it, which is why I've put this off so long. However, after doing a little bit more research and looking into this, I reached out to this company and found out a little bit more about it and decided to go ahead and take on the challenge. I think after watching this, you're going to be comfortable doing this yourself. So you're gonna get this from dipyourcar.com. If you use code BEARDED, you'll get 10% off and this kit starts at about $47. The kit that I got is in shadow black. It's a satin finish and this is going to match the other finishes on your car. If you'd prefer to have gloss, they also have two other options and they're both a gloss finish. So this kit is going to come with a pre-dip spray and we're gonna use this to pre-condition the surface. We're gonna clean with it and have that surface ready. It's also going to come with two cans of the Hyper Dip. This is a lot of product. This is way more than you're gonna to need to do this. You're not even gonna use half of a can. So you're gonna have enough product to do multiple items if you desire. So maybe there's somebody else around you that also wants that or your other car has chrome that you'd like to delete. This can do both cars. You're also going to get painter's tape, which you're going to use to tape off around the emblems. This spudger tool actually has two sides to it and we're going to use both sides. There's a flat side and then there's a pointy side and more on that later. And then of course it comes with a microfiber. The nice thing is the microfiber towel that they give you seems to have a lot less lint than most microfibers I've used. So it's actually a really good one and I highly recommend using the one that they provide because you're gonna have to get all that lint off of the surface and by minimizing the lint that's left on the surface, it's gonna make it a lot cleaner finish on the car. So very likely, much like your car, you can see there's a lot of dirt, there's a lot of debris here in the corners and crevices of the emblems. And this is on all the emblems around the car. So this is why it's really important to clean this really well. Before we start cleaning, what we're going to do is tape the outline of the emblems. So you're gonna tape all emblems. So the letters here on the bottom right, and then of course the Tesla logos. Now when you do this, you're gonna to wanna to have four layers of tape. So stack that up all the way up and around. If you so desire, you can also use paper or plastic to cover the rest of the car in the area if you desire. However, this is really easy to clean up and the extra work may not be worth it. I'll show you later why that is possible. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to get our microfiber towel and we're gonna spray the pre-dip directly on that towel. And then you're gonna get your spudger tool and on the flat side, stick that in underneath the microfiber towel. We're gonna use this to clean and don't skimp on the cleaning. Do as good a job as you can getting in all the nooks and crannies, all the crevices, don't use the pointy end because it will poke through the microfiber towel. So use this, get all the corners, all the letters, all the emblems, and get it as clean as possible. Now that we've done this, we're ready to spray. Now the first two coats are going to be a dry coat or a very light coat, and then we're going to do six to seven coats that are wet. And I'll show you what this looks like. This first coat, we're lightly going to spray across the surface and we're not looking for a wet application. It should go on and almost look dry. It'll be very spotty, very splotchy. This is kind of your tack surface, the first layer. We're gonna do this to all the emblems. We're gonna do this again for a second time. So that's two dry layers before we get into the wet coats. All right, so now that those first two coats are done, we're gonna go back over this and do six to seven wet coats. I would stick more to the seven coats 
than the six, and you'll see the difference between six and seven coats here in a little bit. I did seven coats on the front and I did six coats on the rear. So you'll be able to see the difference when I peel this off. The main key is to get this wet, but not to drip. So we want just enough material on the emblem that it is going to be wet, a good solid coat, but it's not gonna be runny. So you're gonna spray this about four to six inches away in overlapping coats. You'll get the hang of this after the first couple of tries and then it'll go on smooth. You're going to need to let this dry between five and 10 minutes between coats. And because of the temperature at the time that I did this, it was more like 10 minutes between coats. So make sure that you're paying attention to how this is drying. Here's what it looks like when it's still wet. It's going to be deceiving because it looks dry, but when you look on the bottom half of it, it's actually still wet. And then of course, this is what it looks like when it's dry. So make sure it looks like this before you put on that next coat. So keep going over this, put seven total wet layers on top of this. All right, so now that we have all seven layers on and it's properly dried, we're going to very carefully remove the tape. So start on the farthest out layers, pull the tape back, and once you get to the tape, right next to the hyper dip, be very careful in pulling this off. We want this to tear the material away. So even if you have to use a thumb or a finger to kind of rip this apart, that's fine. Don't let this pull up all the way to the emblem. So when removing this, we actually want it to tear away from the emblem. And the way that this applies is it is going to tear at those transition points naturally. So as you're pulling this away, you're gonna to wanna to pull in the direction away from the angle of whatever it is that it's attached to. So where the letters are, just pull out and away from that direction and it'll start to tear. Do not pull hard, just a nice, firm, consistent pull will get the job done. Now what you'll notice is we still have these areas in between the letters that we need to get and they can be tricky. And this is where the spudger tool is going to come in handy. So with that pointy side, gently, we're going to try to create a small tear in the middle. And once we've done that, we should be able to get underneath and lift and pull all the way around the perimeter. It does take a little bit of time to do this, but it's not too bad. And then once we've taken care of all that, you'll see that there's plenty of spots around the letters that still have some material that needs to be removed. The key to this is to remember, you want to pull, not cut. So don't use your spudger tool to kind of shear it off. You wanna use that to pull it away. And this does kind of bunch up, so it is a little tricky, but it's not too hard to do overall. Now there is another technique that I learned while doing this, and it is actually rolling the spudger tool. So once you get the pointy end of the spudger tool underneath the material, if you just start rolling it as you're pushing forward, it's actually gonna start pulling naturally away from the perimeter. And you can do this all the way across, especially on the emblems, it works really well. So keep doing this until you've removed all the excess material around the emblems. The Tesla T, of course, is the easiest. It's simple to pull this up. That rolling technique works exceptionally well for these T's. Even if you decided that you wanted to just try the emblems, super easy to do, and then you can decide if you wanna do the letters later. The front here is the cleanest finish that I was able to achieve, and that's because it's a flat surface. So simple to do, easy to remove the excess. I think it turned out really well. So when we did the taping, I mentioned that you can put additional material like plastic or paper to cover more areas. As you can see very clearly, there's a lot of overspray up here but I didn't put the extra effort in because let me show you how easy it is to remove this. If you just take your pre-dip, if you just take your pre-dip spray and coat the microfiber towel, this buffs right off. So there's no issue there. It didn't take a lot of work to remove this and it was a lot quicker and simpler than applying additional covering to protect the car's paint. Now for the finished product. So as we look around, the front emblem looks absolutely the best and looks perfect in my opinion. And as we go to the back, the letters probably look the worst and I'll probably wait till it warms up a little bit and I'm gonna try this again just on the letters. I think everything else looks really good and from a distance, I think it all looks good. At the end of the day, I no longer have chrome on the outside of the car. I did it myself and it was pretty reasonable from a cost perspective to do this. I do think that having these extra cans means I can get creative with other vehicles in our garage, so I'm excited about that. 
But overall, I'm very satisfied with this and I hope that you're equally excited to try this out yourself. This was super simple. Again, dipmycar.com, use code BEARDED to save 10%. I don't get a commission for you using it, but it's still a good way for you to save a few bucks and get this kit for yourself. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Of course, give it the thumbs up if you did. If you haven't already, of course, subscribe to the channel as we continue to post content regularly. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Tesla. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll catch you next time.